Music by nature has always had a connection to time, and because of this, music can affect the listener's perception of how fast or slow time feels to be moving. Identified as cinematic rhythm in film, Jean Mitru describes it as a dialect of time which has the innate ability to distort the perceived flow of time within the cinematic experience. Video games use a type of cinematic rhythm, but because the player is in control, its influence actively affects the player's pace rather than create a passive experience. Andreas Rauscher describes this phenomena as adaptive Mickey Mousing. The term Mickey Mousing was inspired by the iconic Disney character Mickey Mouse because of how he and other characters in the classic Mickey Mouse animations would move in synchronization with the music. In a video game, the player has control of the character, so this synchronization with the music is not predetermined in the same way that it is in animation. However, the player can be influenced by music that causes them to estimate that a time period is shorter or longer than it really is. When a time period is estimated to be longer, the listener is experiencing an augmentation of time perception where time seems to be moving at a slower pace. When a time period is estimated to be shorter, the listener is experiencing a compression of time perception where time seems to be moving at a faster pace. The player then matches their pace to the pace of the music because it's what communicates the flow of time within a game. The first method of compressing one's sense of time is through tempo. A faster tempo compresses the perceived flow of time which conveys a sense of haste and agitation that causes the player to increase their pace. A classic example of this are the drowning tracks from the Sonic the Hedgehog games, where the music steadily speeds up to signify that the player will soon drown. The music steadily speeds up to signify that the player is running out of time, they perceive a compression on time as the rhythmic intervals get increasingly shorter. While a gradually speeding up tempo can demonstrate the effect of perceived compression very well, the tempo does not need to fluctuate in order to influence the player. Fast music is inherently more energetic, and the rhythmic intervals are shorter than slower music, so the effect only increases as the tempo increases. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild demonstrates this effect through a composition called Lost Woods, which is only heard in five labyrinthine locations. Three of these locations are a classic labyrinth with towering walls while the remaining two are forests, one covered in a thick fog and the other cloaked in complete darkness. Lost Woods has a fast tempo of 160 beats per minute to the quarter note. There is a consistent eighth note rhythm created with an echo one octave higher which suggests a speed that is twice as fast. The quick tempo compresses the player's perception of time to make them move at a quicker pace in hopes of reaching their destination sooner. The speed of the music is not the only thing that dictates how fast the player perceives time. The complexity and the tonality of the piece itself can have an effect on time perception as well. In a study conducted by James J. Kalaris, Vyaj Kumar Krishnan, and Steve Oakes, subjects had to estimate how long a musical track lasted. They found that people, on average, overestimated the length of less complex music compared to the more complex variation of the same music. This can be interpreted as the subjects experiencing an augmentation of time while listening to simple music and a compression of time while listening to complex music. The researchers concluded that high complexity in music, especially in the melody rather than accompaniment, distracts from a player's cognitive timers and inhibits their ability to store and recall information because it takes up more cognitive resources. Lost Woods appears to have very little complexity because it consists of just four notes arranged in a short motif that is modified into different variations and smaller fragmentations. However, the piece creates an illusion of complexity by avoiding any sort of consistent pattern. Music is commonly written to adhere to certain beat hierarchies within a given time signature. In Western art music and popular music, the first beat of the bar is inherently the strongest but there can be multiple strong beats depending on the meter.
The melody and harmony of the music accentuates the beat hierarchies, which creates a consistent pattern for the listener. Lost Woods, however, deliberately avoids creating a consistent pattern. It begins with two bars of a clear three-beat pattern, with a downbeat of each bar accentuated by the highest note of the pattern. However, the pattern is immediately broken in the third bar where the second beat is dropped entirely to create a bar consisting of only two quarter note beats. Later in bar 7, the motif is augmented so that the second pair of notes repeats thrice, creating a five beat unit. The entire piece continuously fluctuates between different variations and fragmentations of the short motif, which creates the illusion of complexity. Lost Woods doesn't have a prominent melody either, only the occasional long-held note and percussive noises. The unpredictable and fluctuating piano is the focal point of the music, but it provides nothing that indicates how long the music has been playing, nor how many times it has looped. Another study by James Kalaris and Robert Kent examined the effect of tonality on a subject's perception of time using three different tonal variations of the same piece, one in a major key, one in a minor key, and the last atonal. Tonal music, such as major and minor keys, use dissonances and consonances within harmonies to progress through the music. Phrases often begin with stable, consonant harmonies, then progress through harmonies with more dissonances to create tension that resolves back to stable harmonies. These progressions have a clear beginning, middle, and end that sounds satisfying to the listener. A tonal music, on the other hand, avoids establishing a key and uses dissonances throughout, which avoids harmonic progressions that establish a key through the resolution of dissonances and consonances. The study found that major tonalities produced estimations of the time listening to be much longer than the actual length of music, and atonality produced the shortest estimations. Similar to the research on music complexity, atonal music takes up more cognitive resources because there is no tonal center for the listener to latch onto. The music itself is disorientating. As I've mentioned, Lost Woods comprises of only four notes, G, B flat, D, and C. The selection of notes creates a G minor chord with an added fourth. In this context, G is the tonic and D is the dominant, and these two notes are the only two that the synthesizer gives emphasis. The inclusion of the C in the otherwise consonant minor chord creates a major second dissonance with both the D and B flat, and the persistence of the dominant in every dyad adds to the instability of the chord. This emphasis on the dominant weakens the G minor chord, and usually it would eventually resolve to a stable chord, where the G is on the bottom. However, no such resolution happens. The result is minor sounding music that is in a perpetual state of motion that lacks any sort of harmonic progression. Lost Woods avoids establishing a tonal key, but it can't be considered an atonal piece either, because of the prominence of the G minor chord. Its effect on the listener's perception of time lies between minor tonality and atonality, where they experience a compression on time perception, but not to the same extent as atonality. The fast tempo, unpredictable rhythms, and tonal ambiguity results in a piece of music that compresses a player's perception of the flow of time in three different aspects. They hear music that insists that they keep up with its fast pace, it distracts them from their cognitive timers, and confuses them through the lack of patterns and progressions. The player is truly lost within the music, just as they are lost within the labyrinth. These compositional techniques are a great way to make a location feel more intense and urgent, and it makes the player feel as if they need to reach their goal quickly, even though there is no time limit imposed upon them.